about 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, Now it's pulling a negative vacuum of about seven or eight, ten. That means it's starving itself for, for refrigeration, as far as I understand. So, we need to add some. Easy enough, right? See what this registers. That line coming in is already like 12 degrees, is the lowest I've seen. Nope, six. 6.9. But you come out even the same panel, you come out. 81 degrees you know but we can go across the back panel and see 63 71 but it's already um, apparently it's dark in the freezer along the back you know it's hard to see but it's already icing up It's already icing up. But it stops about right there. And the rest of the stuff doesn't get cold at all, even after hours. You know, if you close the freezer, the whole freezer will drop. You know, just from the top shelf getting cold with it empty, you know, the entire freezer will drop to. Um, if you close the door, the entire freezer would drop to 40 degrees or so, but that's just because the top one's cooling. But the compressor never shuts off. The compressor just keeps running because it's never, um, the thermostat's never reaching temperature. The, this refrigeration system holds. Eight point five ounces of R one thirty four A, or two hundred and forty one grams. Problem is, if I put this whole can in here, these three ounces or eighty five oh it says right there eighty five grams. That's like a third of what this entire system holds, and I don't think I should have a third of this stuff running through the whole system. So I only want to put about an ounce in there. Um, it's going to be a little bit tricky because this line, supposedly, you know, a three foot quarter inch diameter line like this holds about one ounce of fluid. So since this stuff is spendy, I'm going to tap this, push it in, push in about an ounce, stop it, and then I'm going to finish pushing it in with this and we'll see how much. Um, Hopefully we need, you know, more than an ounce of fluid to get this thing up and going. So I just barely added about two ounces of the super sealer. I didn't want to add the whole three ounces because the whole system only holds 8.5 ounces of refrigerant. So two ounces, a little under two ounces, 
was probably, I actually tried to just add one ounce, but a little more went, went in than I was expecting. Um, now I have the the 134A hooked up to it, and I'm just adding a little bit of time and then watching it because I want the I want the gauge to sit at about zero because you want the the system should be between zero and about two psi's. Um, you don't want it to really be pulling a negative vacuum. So I was at 14 negative 14 inches of hydrogen or whatever and now I'm at 10. So I think I've added so I've added about 2 ounces of this and maybe about an ounce of this now. So I'll just crack it. Add some Turn it off. The compressor working harder. 1.3 amps, 1.25 amps. Pushes that through, cycles through. And then this settles down. This this jumps up to the 60 psi or so for a while. And now it's down to about two. And it'll pull a little bit of a vacuum still, a little bit more. What is that? Probably about two ounces of that, of the 134A. And now it's pulling a negative vacuum again. We're, we're down to about three, negative three. It's pulling down to about seven, negative seven. So I'm going to add a little bit more. Well, before it was only getting cold on. So before it was only getting cold along the very back row to about here. Now you can it's frosting up this way, this way. Almost the entire thing, at least one shelf is almost frosting up. So. So one would conclude that more refrigerant is making it colder. Definitely a lot. And all the lines are definitely a lot cooler. So we're going to keep adding some 134A until we get it to maintain zero, degree, zero PSI. And we'll keep checking it. We're down to one PSI right now. And it was down to zero before it cycled off. Looks like it's climbing down just a little bit lower. Those are my temperatures. So negative thirteen point two degrees and 
70. So it's been about 12 hours, 13 hours since I actually filled it. Um, I let it sit overnight. The pressure stayed the same. Uh, it dropped down to zero PSIs where it should be, supposedly. Um, when I woke up a couple hours ago, the temperature in the freezer was actually, well, last night it was actually negative 12, but uh, this morning it was actually negative, it was negative 13.2 and 70 degrees. Uh, I did open up the refrigerator, open up the freezer, look at it. So r right this second it is, well the thermometer is 8 degrees and it's 79 degrees. So, but it's it's falling because I just barely had to I manually kick the compressor off um, just to check pressures and I kicked it right back on with the thermostat switch. So it's dropping right where it should be and it's running good so uh, I think I'll keep the compressor gauge the gauges hooked up to it for a while um, maybe a couple days or so just to make sure it's not leaking out anything um, in my situation I didn't have to pull a vacuum in my situation I I could have still evacuated the system and, and pulled the vacuum but I didn't think it was completely necessary. Um, if your system is completely dry and there's nothing in it, it's empty, empty. It's providing no cooling at all. You're gonna have to pull a vacuum, which isn't isn't that hard. If you have a manifold gauge set, it just hooks up to the middle one where you would have hooked your can. And um, I know Harbor Freight sells a air compressed vacuum, so you hook it up to your air compressor. You have to have a good size air compressor. But it'll pull a vacuum, um, and they run 15 bucks, something like that. Or you can get an actual full plug-in um, vacuum for about 100, something like that. Uh, if you have coupons and stuff, usually you can pick them up for 80 bucks, something. Pull in right about zero. So all in all, I think I had to put in about four ounces of refrigerant and super seal. So my system was essentially half empty. But all the coils in the, in the freezer are all now iced up. Every single coil is getting nice and cold. Um, they all have frost on them. That's what you want to see. My freezer actually has a pretty rare problem. Um, according to reading online, only happens according to refrigeration guys, it only happens maybe 20% of the time, so but it's still fairly common. Most of the time there's your compressor shot, um, your receiver dryer, which is that doodad is clogged or bad or something, and you have to put a new one of those on, but I guess even if you had to put those on, You'd follow virtually the same steps I did, except for you would evacuate, you know. I think a new compressor run you somewhere around 150, 200 bucks. I'm not sure about a receiver dryer, but if you're handy with brazing and soldering, uh, shouldn't be a big deal. Put one on, evacuate the system, and recharge it. Say it's been about five days, six days, about six days since I recharged it, and everything's going good. The freezer seems to maintain very good temperature. Um, right, it's it's pretty around negative fourteen. Uh, it'll go even colder. I actually have it set. I think there's eight settings, one through eight, and I believe I have it set on five. Um, so it could possibly go colder. It's right, let's see what's inside. What we got? Don't actually got a lot of stuff in there, but all the shelves get iced up now. 
nice and cold. I just want to go over that this is actually just a last resort. Um, the freezer, because the, the leak is potentially in the exterior skin, because there isn't a, actually an accessible um, condenser. Evaporator. No, it's going to be a condenser because it's not accessible. It's under the skin. Um, the freezer's junk. So all in all, besides the um, just for the the product, it cost me about fifty bucks. So fifty bucks to tell whether or not my you know to save my freezer is better than spending six hundred bucks on a new one, seven hundred dollars on a new one. Good luck.